you're tuning in from, and welcome to today's webinar, The Top Three Threats to Manufacturing Efficiency. My name is Ben Johnston. I'm Director of Product Management here at RMG Networks, and with me today is Kerwin Everson, our Global Practice Leader for Visual Supply Chain uh, Solutions. And we are here today to talk about the threats to manufacturing efficiency and how visual solutions using digital signage and desktop dashboards can help mitigate those threats. But before we get started, I want to check in with audio, just make sure everyone can hear me. If you can hear me loud and clear, just raise your hand using the webinar tools on the right side of your screen. You may have to expand the tools, but it's the little red arrow. And I'll just wait a second here and see if I see some hands raising. See some hands going up. So I'm going to assume uh, that most of you can hear me and are paying attention. So we will. Uh, We'll get started here. So uh, now that that's out of the way, let's meet our presenter, Kerwin Everson, who is our global supply chain practice leader here at RMG Networks. Good morning, Kerwin. Hi, Ben. Great to be here today. I, I appreciate you driving the webinar and look forward to our discussion. Absolutely. Happy to do it, and um, always great to talk to you. So I know that uh, you're going to talk with us about some challenges facing today's manufacturing managers and show us a few ways to increase productivity, which I'm going to use interchangeably with, with efficiency, which we have in the title here. So to get us going, I thought maybe we could start with talking about how manufacturers measure efficiency and productivity. And you know, this first slide we have introduces the concept of, of OEE, or overall equipment effectiveness. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and about some of the principles of Six Sigma or TQM and, and Lean and how that sure. plays into to the webinar here. Absolutely. So you, you ask about uh, you know the ways that manufacturing facilities measure productivity, and it's I say it's nearly as varied as the number of manufacturing plants that exist. So um, certainly some of them are using OEE, this term that you have on the on the screen now, but you know they've long used things like TQM and uh, other uh, you know Japanese practices, total quality management, uh, lean manufacturing, which is simply just manufacturing without waste and um, you know at the, at the core at the backbone of lean is is uh, JIT or just in time and um, you know uh, not to get sidetracked here but speaking of just in time I was supposed to be presenting with Michael Hellison as you know and uh, uh, they had a just in time delivery a, a little baby boy born so I'm, I'm uh, running solo here today so I appreciate that but uh, um, my manufacturing experience would include, uh, you know, General Motors and Ford and, uh, and aluminum manufacturing plant as well. But um, other, just some other terms that you, you obviously hear tossed around, Six Sigma and SPC or statistical process control. But this one that you have up, up here right now, OEE, is one of the more common measurements. And it, right. is a, uh, a, it is a calculation of all those factors there, not just how many have we made, not just production, but the availability, the performance, and the quality all go together to, to make up OEE, just like in lean and other, other uh, 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 measurements. Right. So it might be a good time to, uh, to just poll the audience here. So we've got a question. Uh, I'm curious, just if, how many of the people who are online with us today, does, do your facilities use lean or Six Sigma or a combination within your manufacturing operations? And so we'll give people a uh, a couple of seconds there to answer. And you don't have like Krispy Kremes up there, but um, <laughs> lean to scene, so there you go. And that does not count. So it looks like you know most people are answering both. So so like you said, both lean and six sigma. And I know one of the principles of lean is is uh, you know the visual monitoring of um, of the production line. So let's uh, let's move into that um, with the first threat that we've identified here which is not visualizing data in real time. So can you talk a little bit about, um, about that threat and how that impacts manufacturing operations? Sure. So, so you mentioned that lean is big on visibility. And I mean, even back to you know, the, 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 the first days of my experience in manufacturing, we had the old-fashioned and on boards, which were just red, yellow, and green lights uh, you know, that were throughout the facility. But, not visualizing data in real time certainly is a threat to your overall manufacturing productivity. Uh, 
OEE and all the product productivity metrics that uh, plant managers use require up to the minute information. So if you think about the calculation we just said that goes into OEE, uh, availability, quality, and performance, it does me no good to know how, how much my machinery was available yesterday or what my quality was a week ago. Um, so yesterday's news or, or even this morning's report don't help me a lot when it comes to manufacturing productivity. So not visualizing data in real time is certainly a threat. However, Ben, um, as we'll be discovering throughout this webinar, uh, visual supply chain solutions can help mitigate this threat. And um, you know, one of the ways we do that in visual supply chain solutions is to to visual to to, to use visual real time data. So. We like to say that real-time information helps you make real-time decisions. And, and real-time information um, eliminates excuses. So uh, visual supply chain solutions can help get that right information to the right uh, person at the right time. And it could, might even be, as you've illustrated here, on a, on a tablet, um, on a large scoreboard, right where the decisions are made. So, so we like to say that immediate action can, can, can yield a faster resolution, and, and that information presented at the execution level is what will improve your productivity. Right. So, so we understand the importance of data, and let's talk a little bit about, um, about where all this data comes from, so, which, which really leads us into the next threat. You know, manufacturing operations um, have a lot of different systems. Uh, in play, depending on the size and the scope of what the operation is doing. Oh. oh, absolutely. So, so these disparate and disconnected systems. If you think about an operations manager or these plant managers that might be listening in, they they rely on data. I mean, that's how they live and live and breathe every day is on data, and that data comes from multiple sources. So it may be multiple machines on the assembly line. It may be multiple systems within the plant from an inventory system to a production system to an order system. And that, those could be uh, you know, disparate systems, as I've said. So capturing that data um, can be costly. Uh, capturing that data can be time consuming. And the result could be something like you're seeing here, that you know, kind of data overload. Everybody has a different report. Everybody's looking at the, the report they went to query back at their office and then come out and, and deliver that information to, to the appropriate folks. So then the key, again, a, a visual supply chain solution you know, can help mitigate this threat through yeah. uh, automated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. On. Well, before we, so before we talk about the automated data retrieval, I'm, I'm curious. I want to ask another polling question oh, here. Yeah. Sure. You know, how many different systems um, do you have in your manufacturing facility? And we'll give, we'll give people a couple seconds to, um, to answer here, but you can't imagine the time and motion involved, um, you know, whether that's walking around on the floor, or talking to a coworker, or a, or a, line, uh, a line manager, collecting data on a clipboard, and then having to go back, input that into a, uh, a spreadsheet, send that out. I mean, that's all, um, it all takes time. So it looks like most people are saying, uh, well, we got a mix. We got about 60% between one and three, and then 30%, eight or more. Um, so that can that that could absolutely be um, uh, very complex and time-consuming to manage. Which brings us to the next um, the net next threat mitigated, which, as you were starting to say, there is the automated data data retrieval. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the the ideal situation would be that that plant manager who has a, an enterprise ERP system where all data uh, resides in some data store, data warehouse. But um, you know, as you just pointed out in the, in, the, in the polling question, it's generally three or four or five or six disparate systems. So this automated data collection is available with a visual supply chain solution through these built-for-purpose collectors or connectors. So we might we might use an ODBC connector to go get at some data or a TCP connector or a text parser. We might even write a, a connector directly to a vendor's um, API. But the key with this automated data retrieval is that you know, once the data is collected uh, in this automated fashion, 
then we have the ability to synthesize that data and aggregate it and manipulate it and you know could even set thresholds on it but the way we like to uh, use the term Ben is what we've done now is we've made the data actionable right so we can we can now visualize it on it could be large scoreboards it could be on a on a desktop dashboard like this guy in your visual is looking at it could be on on that mobile device but but the point is we've made the data actionable right right and and you know back to your your earlier point you know when that when that data is not automated or the retrieval isn't, it's so hard to pull in hourly reports or, or even daily. So um, this to me seems like a critical component of a, uh, of a visual supply chain system. So Absolutely. And, and it's one thing for the data to be in disparate systems, but then kind of leads right into the next point here. It, it kind of brings us to this third thread. Many times the information is, is siloed. So, right. uh, you know, it's in various different areas of a plant or various, you know, one plant doesn't know what's happening at another. So when your data is siloed, um, you know, you, you experience slower decision making. Um, you have these pockets of knowledge. You know, imagine you, you've now cut off key decision makers. So if Ben knows and Kerwin doesn't, he may make a decision, uh, you know, totally separate from other information that would be vital. And, and what you what you miss out on then is the ability to answer the question, you know, where can I have the biggest impact right now? Right. Um, so, right. so the yeah. so the the concept of a central server or a collection point becomes um, becomes very important in breaking down those um, breaking down the barriers or the walls between those silos, and then allowing you to get to something closer to you know, our third uh, mitigated point here, which is, you know, whole chain visibility, right? Right, right. This is the, so this is the uh, uh, obvious goal in the, in the solution, and that is to provide whole chain visibility and not this siloed uh, uh, information. So by, by providing whole chain visibility, all of a sudden now I know, hey, that inbound shipment is going to be an hour late. Well, guess what? I could do some machine maintenance or some other thing, other tasks prior to that arriving. Or I'll know now. The whole entire plant will know that our primary customer has just issued an immediate uh, change order, and we're going to have to change have a have a 15 minute changeover to make their their new order that it's now taken priority over the previous one we were working on. Or uh, how 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 awesome for the plant manager to know? Hey, line one has just completed 100% of their goal for the day, we could actually move some labor over to line two or line three because they're sitting at 50 or 60% respect. Um, right. So it's like the old saying, so, information is absolutely power in this case and allows you to foster more of a, a performance-based environment when you, when you can know where to address, direct your attention. Uh, certainly, certainly. And if you, put, if you kind of put all these three together, you know, it just it just makes a nice flow. So all of a sudden, you can you can say, I, I'm going to have real time data. It's going to be automatically retrieved, and it's going to provide me whole chain visibility. So what this can foster then is a performance based environment that it's really I'm better equipped to meet the company goals because I can see end to end. I've got data that's current up to the minute, and it was automatically retrieved for me. I didn't have to leave my work site, go back to my desk or office and run queries or, you know, look at a, a day old or week old report. Right. So this is very powerful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I've been in so many manufacturing facilities, they may use some version of visual, but lots of times they don't have any visual scoreboards. And, you know, the analogy I like to use, it's it's almost like attending uh, a sporting event without a scoreboard. I mean, what, what fun would it be to, to be at this uh, sporting event and not know what's the score, how much time is remaining, and then maybe even there is a scoreboard. This would even be worse, Ben. I'm, I'm at the ball game, but it's got the, it's got the score from yesterday's game on it. You know, and that's, right. where, that's where some of these manufacturing employees could be. They could be at, at the game on their job, and they're looking at yesterday's score. Or they have to leave the game leave their activity and go to the front of the plant to see the scoreboard. Um, so, you know, let's put it where they can make a decision in real time at their production facility on yeah. the line. 
I love the analogy. I love the analogy. So we talked a little bit earlier about um, the importance of this concept of a, of a centralized server, um, where all this data is coming from, um, and, and the power of aggregating and then being able to um, manipulate the data in some way, make it interesting, make it actionable, and then send it out to you know, the variety of devices uh, so that you can put it in front of the right people at the right time for the, for the most impact. So do you want to talk a little bit about the different types of systems that, uh, that we see in manufacturing facilities? Sure, sure. So you, you mentioned there was actually a few people that had eight or more. Well, here we've, here we've highlighted at least eight. At least we have eight bullet points. Some of them have multiple systems within them. Um, but if you think about the manufacturing plan, if your orders reside in one place and your, your customer data resides somewhere else and you have a, you have a, a management system that is either keeping track of labor or transportation or production or warehouse data, you may even have a homegrown system. We've, we're actually tapping into data for some customers, but believe it or not, they still have a homegrown system operating on an AS400 machine and we're running right. queries against that. So I believe the it. point is, yeah, the point is it could be a line TLC, um, and and um, wherever your data is coming from, let's let's collect it in real time and present it in real time to some of these displays like you might see on the right, a large scoreboard, a desktop, or a mobile device. You know, I wanted to share a little bit about what some some customers we've consulted with recently and are engaged in consulting uh, uh, in, uh, relationships with. Uh, one of a, a large manufacturer in Montreal that uh, we're working with, they have, a, they have an awesome uh, data system. They have great data. They have useful scorecards. They have meaningful KPIs. But they explained to us that this is all a manual process to create this scoreboard, whether it's created weekly or maybe daily. And it takes multiple managers, as you can see up and down on the left-hand side, whether they're from right. safety or quality or operations to manually produce this scoreboard and enter the data. What we can do, if you kind of think about moving to the next one here, is we could automate this entire process and make this something where this data is gathered in an automated fashion by a, again, built for purpose collector connector that goes and gets the, the production data and the, 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 the quality data and the scrap information and even employee morale. Uh, you know, you may not gauge that daily, but you may do a monthly cust uh, employee survey. And the point is that we've now made an automated scoreboard with actionable data, and we're, we can make a difference on the floor, you know, in real time. Um, right. One of the, yeah. I, I think you, you, you said you had heard this, somebody referred to this as like a 360 degree scorecard, right? So. Yeah, now, absolutely. It, yeah, everyone in the plant knows how every area is functioning and, and performing. Right. Well, and I and and I know we have some some historical metrics here on this example, but I think the the power of real time for manufacturing really comes through. You know, the old saying about statistics: what good are statistics when all they do is tell you what happened in the past? But with the real time data collection capabilities, um, you know, you can affect production immediately as 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 that data is being reported. So talk, talk, talk to us about this next slide here. Well, we had a, we had a customer. This this happens to be a large supplier um, to uh, one of the big three automakers, and they they happen to produce windshields. What was really interesting was they were reporting on uh, something akin to real time OEE at the time. They called it tax percentage. Um, mm -hmm. But what they started doing was gathering real time information about quality. Simply, first of all, it was simply quality, and and they had various departments throughout the plant, and department 306, 307, 308, and as the windshield would move down the line, one department might be actually doing a quality inspection and notice that, hey, these windshields that come from department 307 into my department 308, there's a scratch or a chip or a break, and they had multiple different uh, quality defects. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner of every windshield. And the, the quicker they acknowledged what was causing that problem and reported upstream and downstream about quality uh, defects, they, were sent, they weren't necessarily producing more volume. They were just producing higher quality, and they were producing less scrap. And what they told us was that they went from producing 7,000 windshields a day 
to producing 8,400 windshields a day. So a, a truly a 20% increase in productivity. And um, just so one other aside there, yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. I mean, that's that's pure ROI. I, I, um, but what what they uh, what they also noted was they were even they were even uh, on those same screens letting letting the entire plant know where every skilled tradesperson was at any given time. So they knew the location of every electrician, every millwright, every uh, pipe fitter, and et cetera, et cetera. They produced they put that on the screen so that. It was truly whole chain visibility, and if they needed an electrician in a higher priority job, they would move him immediately. And uh, the bottom right. line was, you know, obviously 20% uh, productivity increase. Yeah, which is huge, and who wouldn't want that? That's great. So <laughs> I, so I want to, I, I don't want to derail the discussion here too much, but I do want to ask one more polling question. So um, we had one more that we thought uh, would have been interesting, and and as we get towards the tail end of the discussion here. So I, I'm curious um, whose companies here report daily on OEE? You know, how how um, widespread is that uh, is that metric? So we've got a few people answering here. We'll give people a few um, a few more seconds here. So so it looks so right now it's about seventy percent say we don't uh, report daily. Um, for about 15, 14 percent. Yes, my company reports daily, and the, and another 14 percent. What the heck is OEE? Oh, now we got a, one more mm -hmm. saying yes, we report daily. So, um, so so there's a fair mix there, but but the majority saying we don't report daily. So you know, with these real time data collection tools, I I think depending on the collectors and the machines and the systems, but you do you do become closer to realizing that. Um, uh, that goal of reporting daily and getting to more of a real time uh, real time scenario so we're um, we're coming towards the the uh, the top of the hour here. Um, those are some great examples at the end Kerwin. thanks for sharing those and we've got a few minutes for questions if you've got any questions that we've we've had a couple come in here continue to send those in so I do want to go to um, to a couple of questions here. Um, the first one is from uh, Robert, who asks, what are some of the key metrics you see visualized, and what are the results of visualizing that data in your customer examples? Okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, again, the kinds of metrics, that really kind of depends on the area of the, um, of the plant, right? So uh, the obvious ones are, I'd like to report on productivity, so I might report things like tasks per hour, or hours per number of units uh, uh, produced, that kind of, basically uh, anything that has to do with throughput or manufacturing cycle times. Um, you know, in a quality area, I've seen lots of scoreboards presenting uh, information about yield. So it might be produced defects. You know, how many defects have I made today? Or, you know, uh, worse is uh, I have delivered defects. They actually got to a customer, or they might measure customer returns. But, you know, the right. true, the bottom line measurement that people really love to report on is cost per unit, revenue, revenue per employee, those kinds of things, which get to that last customer example because now I can report on ROI, right? I can have a true ROI when I see an uptick in productivity or a, or a lower cost per unit, a return on assets, whatever you want to uh, uh, call it. But um, good question, and, you know, we'd, we'd love to uh, consult with, with different folks about what's, what's most appropriate for your area. Right. Great. So we, we've got uh, another question here from Matthew who wants to know, what are some of the key areas where you see digital signage on plant floors? Okay. Another, yeah, another good question. So it, 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 uh, if what I have seen is if the metrics, if the scorecard is, uh, or scoreboard is plant-wide metrics, uh, plant managers like to just put those in a centralized, you know, high traffic area. So maybe they want to make sure every employee sees it going to and from break or to and from lunch. So plant-wide metrics might be in a different location than these individualized production line data or uh, machine data or work cell information. So if I've got data that's about an individual machine operator, I want to put that information as close to the employee, as close to the execution level as possible. So, you know, I'm going to put these signs where these scoreboards where I can affect behavior, where I can motivate employees. So, 
start thinking about you know high labor intensive areas, any bottleneck areas in your plant, or obviously any quality inspection areas. You're gonna you want to want to put uh, information uh, up. So another good question. Yeah. Right. So we're about out of time here, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. And Kerwin, I want to thank you for your time, and thanks for taking us through uh, the exciting topic uh, of the top three threats to manufacturing efficiency and for answering these questions. And I want to thank all the uh, attendees for your time as well. You will receive an email with links to download uh, the webinar presentation slides. And if we didn't get to your question uh, right now, we will follow up directly via email. And be sure to follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter or at our blog, which you can get to from our website, and keep an eye out for more uh, webcasts and webinars from RMG Networks this year. If you have more specific questions or want to learn more about how visual supply chain solutions can help your business, please contact us directly. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. And this concludes the webinar. Goodbye. <laughs>